Here are 10 things I wish I knew when I started using Keyboard Maestro over half a decade ago. These tips and tricks will help you make better macros, which in turn will help you stop wasting time on your work. Starting with tip number one, which is to use the record button. So in Keyboard Maestro, I'm gonna come down here and press the plus button to make a new macro. And then the record button can be found here. So when you press it, it will start a countdown timer from five seconds. And once that timer finishes, then the macro will record any keystrokes you make, any mouse clicks you do, any applications you open. So for example, I'm gonna press the mouse up here and you can see it add in an action that will click the mouse at that coordinate location. So then once you're done recording whatever actions you make, if you're typing keystrokes or opening apps, then you can press the record button again and that will stop the recording. So this can be a great way to learn some of the basic actions in Keyboard Maestro without needing to add them manually to the macro. So let's put this into practice. There's a task I want to do. I want to open the browser, then I want to open a new tab and go to the Keyboard Maestro forum and then press the login button up here. So let's see if we can use the record action to do that. So I'll come back to Keyboard Maestro then I'll come down and press record and wait for it to count down from five. And now that it's finished counting down, let's do those actions in order again. So first was to open the browser and then I'll press command T to open a new tab. And here I'll type the Keyboard Maestro Forum website. And then I'll press enter. And then finally, I'll come up here and press the login button. So that was all of the actions we needed. Let's come back to Keyboard Maestro and press record to finish the recording. So you can see it opened the browser, it pressed Command T, we typed in the name of the website, pressed return, and then clicked at a certain coordinate to access the login button. And it also recorded the part at the very end where I opened Keyboard Maestro. So I'll delete that since we don't need it. Now we're ready to test these actions, which brings us to tip number two. Tip number two is to have a hotkey trigger that you use to test macros. So I always use the keyboard shortcut command option control S to test macros. So this is a hotkey trigger that I reserve just for testing macros. And once I've tested them and make sure they're working like I want them to, then I'll change that hotkey to something else. But during the test process, I know that it will always be this. It's an easy shortcut that I can press with just my left hand. And it means I don't have to remember a lot of different hotkeys whenever I'm testing macros. So now that we have this hotkey, let's run it and see what the macro does. So I'll press the hotkey and it opens the browser, goes to the forum website, but it looks like it didn't press the login button correctly. It did move the mouse to that location, but it didn't press it like this, like we were expecting it to. So let's come back to Keyboard Maestro and see if we can figure out what's going wrong here. Now, sometimes you wanna test just a few actions at a time to make sure they're working correctly without testing the whole macro. So a great way to do that is by pressing an action and then coming down here and pressing the try button. So if I press this try button, you can see it runs just that singular action that I had selected. And if I have multiple actions selected, which I'm doing by pressing shift on the keyboard and then pressing a number of actions to highlight them all, then if I press try, it will run all four of those actions that I have highlighted. So it looks like the macro ran this part correctly. It opens the keyboard my show forum, which means that there's probably something going wrong here with one of these last two actions. So let me run the entire macro again by pressing the hotkey. And again, it looks like it's not clicking this login button correctly. So it seems like what's happening here is that since there's a delay between when the website loads and when this login button appears, the macro is clicking that spot too fast. It's clicking it before the login button has loaded. So that brings us to the next tip, tip number four, which is to add pauses between actions. So oftentimes you'll make a macro and it will have two actions like this, which will run back to back very quickly, 
but you actually need some delay between them so they don't run too fast. Well, a great way to do that is by coming to the Actions window and searching for Pause. Now, if I double click on the Pause action, it will insert that into the macro, and I'm gonna bring it between these two actions, the type a keystroke that types return and the action that clicks the mouse. And I'll change this pause to just one second. So often when you use the record action down here, you'll need to add pauses between actions so they don't run too quickly. But now let me press the hotkey and see what it does. And in this case, you could see that it paused for a second before it pressed the login button and it ran correctly because of that. Now, I think we should expand this macro a little bit, add some more functionality by having it type in our username once it clicks the login button. So I want it to do something like this where it types uh, my username, max productivity. Let's see if I can spell it. So I'll copy this and come back to the macro. So ideally what we want is another action like this one to insert text by typing after the login button is clicked. Now we could add another action like this by coming to the actions pop-up window, but tip number five is that you can easily duplicate actions by holding the option button on your keyboard and clicking and dragging an existing action down. So you can see there was this green plus icon that appears when I start to click and drag, and when I release, it will duplicate whatever action or multiple actions I have selected. So now in this insert text action, I'll paste in my username from before, and we can test this macro out. By the way, if you want me to personally help you make macros like this to speed up your workflow, you can book a free call with me using the top link in the description. But now let me run the macro, and it looks like it worked correctly. It pressed the login button, and then it typed in my username. But now let me show you a problem that could occur with this macro. So we have this action here to click the left mouse button at a certain position up here relative to the front window's top left corner. So what that means is that it will click that mouse button relative to the top left corner up here. But if the size of the window changes, that might not work anymore. So if I click and drag like this, so that the distance from the top left corner has changed, then the macro might not work. So let me run the macro again. And you can see it clicked the search button instead of the login button. And that's because the position of the search button is where the position of the login button used to be before we changed the size of the window. So to get around this, what we can do is add an action to click on an image instead of just a coordinate. So let's come back to Keyboard Maestro and I'm going to delete this click mouse action. And instead I want to insert a new action to click at an image. Now we could add that action with the default actions pop-up window, but tip number six is that there's a faster way to add actions to your macro. If you press the shortcut Command Control A, that will bring a search bar up where you can search for actions by name. So add action by name, and I'll search for click at found image. And now if I press enter, it will insert whatever action I have highlighted. So I'll press enter here, and you can see it quickly inserts that action into our macro. So command control A is how you can search for actions by name and quickly add them to your macro. So now we have this new action, we need to find an image that it will click on. So let's come back to the browser and I'll press command control shift four to capture this image. Pressing command control shift four will save that image to the clipboard, which I can then paste by pressing command V. So now we're ready to run this macro. Let's see what it does when I press the shortcut. It works in this scenario. Let's change the size of the window and see if that works as well. And that looks like it worked too because it's clicking this image instead of clicking on a coordinate relative to the top left corner. So let me re-expand this window and come back to Keyboard Maestro. 
Now tip number seven is that we can actually get rid of this pause action up here. So I'm gonna delete that and instead right click on the found image action or click the gear icon up here and check this menu item that says wait for image. So what that will do is it will cause the action to actually wait until the image appears before it tries to click it. So even if the website hasn't loaded yet, it will wait until the website does and this image is on the screen. So let me run the macro and you can see as soon as the login image appeared, the macro clicked on it. So this is a great way to set up macros to click whenever images appear. For example, if the website took a long time to load, maybe it takes three seconds to load for some reason, the macro would continue to wait until that image appeared. Now you don't want it to keep waiting forever, so you can change that by going to set action timeout and changing this to something like five seconds. So it will wait for up to five seconds for this image to appear, but then once that five seconds is up, it will just cancel the macro. So I like to keep that pretty low so the macro doesn't keep running and using up CPU if it doesn't find the image within this time frame. Also, you can download this macro in the description if you want to play with it yourself. But now let's take a look at tip number eight. So tip number eight is that we can restore the mouse location whenever an action clicks at a certain place. So normally when I run the macro, you'll notice that my cursor goes from wherever it is on the screen and it teleports up to this login button whenever the macro clicks on it. Now that can be a little bit annoying just to have your mouse jump around the screen, but we can prevent that by right clicking on the action and pressing restore mouse location. So now if I run the macro, you'll notice my cursor is over here and I'm running the macro and it stays in the place without teleporting up here and staying up here. So what this restore mouse location menu item will do is it will quickly click on the login button and then bring the cursor back to wherever it was before that click took place. So this just makes things a lot smoother and more seamless as you're running your macros. Now that we have a working macro, tip number nine is to add comments to your macros. So I'm going to press Command Control A again to add a new action. And this time I'll search for comment. So if I press enter on this comment action, it will insert this comment here where I can type in any notes that I want. So comments have no functional effects on the macro. They don't change what it does at all, but they're a great place to type in notes so that you can do things like remember what the macro is supposed to do. So it's pretty easy to remember what this does now, but maybe in several months we'll come back to it and have no idea what it's supposed to do. So we might say something like uh, opens the keyboard maestro forum, then presses login and types our username. So this can be really helpful to have some documentation within your macros. And of course you can duplicate these by holding option and put them in as many places as you want with whatever text you need. Now the final tip, tip number 10, is that you can change the color of actions. So if you right click on an action, you can come down to set color and there's several different ones that you can choose from to make your macros have different colored actions. Now colors like comments have no actual effect on what the macro does, but they can be really helpful for organizational purposes. So if there are different parts of your macro that do different things, it might make sense to have them be different colors. So, you know, this part of the macro opens the website within the browser, and then this part is clicking the image and entering our username. So although the colors don't change what these actions do at all, it can be helpful to visually distinguish between different parts of the macro itself. So this has been 10 tips and tricks for beginners in Keyboard Maestro. The algorithm thinks you'll like this video next. Let's see if it's right.